All right, welcome back to drawing everybody. So for this video demonstration, I'm going to be uh, discussing uh, how to go about drawing portraiture or self portraits more specifically. So um, a couple of things that we need to keep in mind uh, while doing this, and hopefully you can see here, um, is that, you know, traditionally artists would draw their self portraits by looking at their own reflection in a mirror. And while it's certainly, you know, all right, if you guys want to do that, it's also a pretty major challenge to do. So, um, when drawing your self portraits, I highly recommend that you draw from a photograph. So I have my photograph printed off here. Now, I'm also drawing on a fairly small scale, once again, for the sake of time uh, and everything like that. But, um, you know, generally speaking, uh, you can draw from a photograph for this. Uh, I would highly recommend it. It's going to be easier on you guys. Now, um, that being said, there are a few things that we need to talk about in relation to uh, your photographs. So, obviously, with your self-portrait, part of it is going to be... Um, you know, we want some aspect of you or your personality to come through in your self-portrait. So it's, it's certainly acceptable for you guys to use any, you know, photograph of yourselves that you want to. Um, but there are some things that can help us out in terms of making our portrait more successful. And first and foremost, uh, the main aspect of what I'm trying to get at here is the way in which we are actually represented within the photograph and therefore within the picture plane, okay? So, um, you know, while it's totally fine to do things like a profile view, you know, where we're looking at ourselves from the side or perhaps from, you know, straight onwards, um, these things tend to be a little bit static and a little bit flat. Um, you know, profile views where we're looking at the side of our face tend to have a kind of a mugshot type of look to them. And similarly, looking, you know, having a straight on image, you know, also tends to either look like a mugshot or your driver's license photo, things like that. And it can also be really challenging with the foreshortening on, you know, certain features like your nose. So generally speaking, most portraits that you'll see in museums or other things like that are going to be presented to you in three-quarter view or what's known as three-quarter view. And that's where the face is just slightly turned to the side a little bit. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't be looking at, you know, the, the camera or whatever in that, but having a kind of three-quarter front or profile view, um, it makes a lot of the kind of weirder ambiguities within the form of the face uh, read a little bit easier. So we're not trying to draw the nose in full blown, you know, like from straight on with extreme foreshortening. Instead, we get kind of a, a nice semi profile like view, which makes the forms a little bit more easy to distinguish things like that. So that's just something to keep in mind. Once again, I want you guys to be expressive in your self portraits. However, um, I also want them to be, you know, really successful and I want them to look good and everything like that. All right. So that being said, um, you'll also notice that I've already pre-toned my paper. In this case, I'm drawing on Reeves BFK, which is a cotton printmaking paper. Um, it's, you know, this is about a fourth of a sheet of the stuff. Uh, so it's been torn down for, you know, the sake of time and everything. But on top of that, I've gone ahead and toned it. So I used my big piece of charcoal. Uh, you could use your, you know, your compressed stick or whatnot. But I just kind of lightly kind of filled in the area. And then I took a paper towel and I smoothed it out. So, um, you know, when I draw with charcoal, I really like to use, you know, paper towel for smoothing uh, this kind of stuff. I also like to use these for blending and uh, everything like that. So you'll probably see me use paper towels in these in these demonstrations. Now, from there, um, I'm also drawing or at least going to be drawing pretty much the exact same size as the image that I have right here. However, I'm still going to be doing it mostly from sight. 
um, in that, you know, I'm going to be using my siding and angle siding. However, because I have my photo right here and I'm not looking at it over here, it's going to be a little bit easier and I won't have to do like, you know, full arm length extensions and everything like that. Now, for this video, I'm going to, or this demonstration, I should say, I'm actually going to split it up into two parts. So for this video, I'm going to focus on doing the line work and showing you kind of how we can go about some of these things fairly easy. And then in the next video, I'll get more into the actual shading of the portrait here. And so in this case, I'm going to use uh, the tone of the, or the charcoal that I've used to tone the paper with to my advantage. And I'm also going to erase back out of this tone uh, to reveal the white of the paper again for my highlights and things like that. So you'll get a sense for that as well. Now for this process, just for doing my basic line drawing, once again, I'm gonna start very simply um, with simple shapes, angles and forms, and then we're going to kind of refine it somewhat. So for this, I'm mostly going to be using my vine charcoal. And so here I've got a really small piece of vine as opposed to my big old thick one uh, here that I used to tone with. However, um, this is a little bit harder uh, vine and so it, it makes a little bit better kind of, you know, general line like mark. But it's important to note that I'm going to try to do this very lightly as well, because many of the like kind of um, lines that I'm going to place with this are going to be more indication marks. And so I don't want them to be very dark because they're not going to correspond to like hard edge lines like the edge of my nose or the side of my face and everything like that, but instead are going to delineate areas of shadow. And so I'm going to want to obscure them at some point. So you'll see, and you know, we'll talk more about that in the next video where I deal more with the shading of this, um, but you'll see me make some lines that are not really ever intended to uh, translate into the uh, the final drawing, okay? Now, to start off with, um, I've also already made a few tick marks so that I know that I want the portrait to fall within these two marks here as, you know, width-wise, and I want them to, or I want my portrait to fall within these two marks height-wise. So I'll have a little bit of negative space around there, but my face will take up the majority of the paper here. So that being said, let's go ahead and start making some basic or more basic forms within this kind of uh, mark, all right? Now, one thing I can do is I can come over and I can make a general mark for the overall kind of angle of my face. And that's extending all the way to the end of my beard. So this bottom mark is actually the end of my beard in the picture. And so generally speaking, I know that, you know, my, my major kind of angle is going to do something kind of like that. Now from there, what I can do is I'm going to also use angle siding to kind of make a basic shape within this. So let's start with the back side of my head uh, with the edge of my ear, which corresponds to this mark here. So I'm going to hold my mark or my charcoal up to that mark and I'm going to make a basic angle there. Now from there, I can also come over and look at something like that, something like that, uh, then this mark over here is also corresponding to my eye, so I'm gonna do the side of my face there, so it's gonna have an angle something like that, and then base, my basic forehead kind of mark. And once again, these are very, very basic marks. I'm not trying to be super accurate with them right now because they are going to kind of, you know, um, change up somewhat as I go. And most of these are going to be obscured anyway. So, you know, they, they can be a little, little bit more effervescent or ethereal or, you know, uh, fleeting, if you will. Because once again, they're, they're mostly going to be obscured at some point. 
So from there, I've got a pretty nice basic idea of where the main portion of my face and my beard is going to fall, okay? So from there, I also want to make a kind of general um, mark for where my, my shirt and everything like that's going to be. So I can kind of do something like that. And I'm, I'm trying to look at the angles that I see within that. So I know that my body is going to fall or my shoulders are going to fall basically within that. All right, so from there, what I want to do is I want to establish a few major marking points. And so I really want to start with my eye line. And so I want to kind of place my eye line, but I also want to, you know, make my angle for my eye line. So I want to align my mark making tool to the general angle that my eyes appear in the picture itself. And so they're, they're going to be a little bit downward facing. But the interesting thing is that our eye or the edge of our eye is also going to correspond to the base of our ear. So from that line, I also know where the base of my ear needs to be. Okay, so that's another interesting thing. So the ear is going to extend out to here but the, um, it needs to follow or at least be somewhat in line with that as well. So from there, what I can also do is make a general angle for my nose, which is also going to kind of follow that main angle that I made there as well. Now from there, what I also wanna do is make a few more kind of uh, marks that are going to tell me about how wide everything is going to be, or at least some more kind of placement marks. So I know that from the edge of my eye to the start of my sideburn, I need it needs to fall within that area. So from there, I can then say, well, my sideburn needs to go to about there, and then my ear needs to come out to about there, okay? So I also know that my ear, the tippy top of my ear is gonna come up just slightly uh, from that line because the base is going to end, you know, kind of end at that line. Okay, now from there, I can also make some measurements based on my photograph and I can say, well, my ear needs to fall basically within that shape and then um, I know that, you know, the back of my head kind of comes off like that. And um, let's also make a kind of delineation for how long my nose is gonna be. So, my nose is going to kind of come to about right there and uh, from there, the bottom of edge of my lip is going to be about right there, okay? So, um, once again, you know, this is fairly easy because I'm, I'm drawing my picture from about the same size uh, here, but for you guys, we wanna make sure that we're, you know, drawing on a full sheet of paper instead of a small cut down sheet but it's the same exact same as your angle sighting in that you can make these measurements and compare them off of one another uh, to other aspects of the drawing, okay? And then that would allow us to be able to see, you know, where everything needs to fall uh, within place and everything like that. So um, that being said, there are a few other things that we can address here. So specifically, Let's do the kind of main angle of my mustache there. And that will also correspond to the main kind of part of my beard, or at least getting down into that area. And so I can kind of generally refine this just a little bit more 
And so likewise from there, I know that the edge of my face is gonna need to be something like that. And uh, I also know that my eye needs to cut in something like that. And something like that. So from there, let's also make a measurement of where my nose is going to start. So the, the kind of tip of my nose needs to be somewhere about there. And the bridge of my nose. And then you can make another measurement. for about how wide my nose needs to be. So I know that my nose needs to fall within that kind of basic shape there. And likewise, I know that the bottom edge of my eye needs to come basically to that crease that I made there. All right, so from that, I can also say that my eye makes a kind of trapezoid like shape and it's gonna cut out just a little further and then my forehead cuts in a little bit more all right so from there too what i want to do i can make this line that's delineating the basic, you know, kind of structure of my eyes to be the bridge of my nose. And then I can look at the other shapes that I see. Now I'm also going to make a measurement from that. So between the edge of my sideburn and where the kind of main kind of shape of my eye uh, comes in. So, from there, I also want to keep the main kind of level of my eyes going the same way so that they are even. And I also want to kind of pay attention to the general kind of shapes of the shadows that are being created within my eye as well. Okay, so from there, I can also come over and start making a few marks for the edge of my beard there, as well as the side of my beard. And obviously, you know, I'm drawing my beard because I have one. Um, whereas you guys might be drawing your chin and everything else. So it's, a, it's important to note to, you know, keep those kinds of things in mind uh, as well. So every portrait's going to be a little bit different. So right there, I've just made a mark to delineate where the crease of my lip is going to be. So this mark uh, corresponds to the bottom edge of my lip, whereas this is the kind of opening in my lip. And I'm also going to make a slight angle for the top of my lip, which is mostly covered by my mustache. However, we will get a little bit of it uh, that comes through here and there. So um, something else to keep in mind. Now from that, I've also got a slight kind of crease in where my chin starts to protrude as well as uh, that little, little bit hanging down there. All right, so from there, I also know that my ear needs to fall within this kind of general 
uh, area. And we're gonna finesse the hell out of this here in a minute, so it's going to become more evident and more accurate. But right now, once again, I'm, my main goal is to get basic shapes and, um, and forms in place so that when I start to refine everything, it's going to be much, much easier on me because then I can just make kind of fluid mo movements or motions, if you will. Now, from there, I want to make another mark, at least another measurement to make sure that everything is kind of accurate, or at least as accurate as possible. So, I'm also looking at this kind of skewed a little bit, so, you know, bear with me some. Uh, is more for your benefit. So I do apologize if your view of what I'm doing is a little skewed. I'm trying to be able to see it with y'all in mind so that y'all can see what I'm doing as well. So I do apologize there. And once again, there's a lot of back and forth that kind of happens with a lot of this as well. So You know, even though I'm starting fairly rough right now, it's probably, we're gonna, you know, do a lot of, of things to it that are going to, uh, you know, help refine it and what have you. So it's looking a little wide to me. based on the starting point. So, we want to address that. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna take a little piece of my paper towel here and I'm going to wipe a little bit of that away just so that I can make some alterations there. And so you can see I am basically just wiped it back into um, oh, the, the kind of toned background, if you will. piece of my vine off but that's all right it's fairly fragile and that's okay so yeah, my my sideburn got a little too wide there all right so there we go Cut in. Now the other thing that we can do is make measurements on how or whereabouts everything is going to kind of come into place. So the bottom edge of my ear needs to be roughly almost to the bottom edge of my nose. So we're pretty accurate there. All right. So from that, 
I'm gonna make another measurements for the back of my head there. And okay, so that's that's a lot better already. Make another measurement where the shirt collar is gonna kind of start. There's that. So I'm also going to make a few marks for where the shirt buttons and all of that kind of stuff. All right. And so this is gonna be an interesting deal because when we start to do the, the shading and everything for real, that's going to be kind of a, a weird, it's going to be kind of trans, my beard, the end of my beard will be kind of transparent, but kind of not. So from here, I'm just trying to make a few more kind of corrections to the overall you know kind of placement of my forehead and and everything like that so once again a lot of this is a lot of back and forth as you go and once again if you make simple marks and light marks they're very easy to get rid of And you can kind of see that I'm uh, you know kind of going over them a, a little here and there so that it's you know more uh, or at least you know in making curves I'm making multiple angles all around so that when I come back it's I can make a fluid motion in one go versus you know a bunch of these kinds of things as well so all right so we're getting getting pretty close there now want to check some things here and there so another thing here I'm going to make a few kind of general marks for areas of shadow that are not necessarily going to correspond to hard edge lines and things like that, but rather shadow lines. Later on, so something else to keep in mind. Now from there, I want to look at few things in my eyes namely where my eye placement and everything is going to kind of be within the major kind of shadow shape that I've created for my eye Once again, I'm, I'm making measurements based on my photograph. And 
and I'm constantly looking back and forth at my, you know, um, at my image. And so I'm starting to get a pretty good idea of where a lot of this stuff's going to fall. Um, okay. Okay, so I think I've got a fairly decent idea of everything and once again there's going to be a lot of kind of finagling that happens in this as well so as we really get going Don't be afraid if it looks a little weird right off the bat or, you know, what have you. It's it's perfectly fine because we can always go back in and, and rework on it and everything like that. Even I make mistakes. And everything like that. Okay, so from there, okay, I think we're pretty close to refining my line work. All right, so from that, I'm going to switch from my vine piece of charcoal and I'm going to switch over to a compressed pencil. Um, now, you know, you guys could also use um, a compressed stick. Here I've got a stick that I've shaved down to a finer point. Um, whatever you got, you can use. Uh, so this is a charcoal pencil. This is not graphite. Um, but it's also kind of a, an old used one that's a little short. So I've got it in my, um, my holder here. And I'm going to also use the mall stick and get kind of close. So I apologize if I obscure some of this for you. I'll try to turn it back at, so you can see it. But here we can see a, a kind of general uh, feeling for the overall portrait. So once again, it's very rough right now. We're going to refine it some more as we go. But um, as I work with this pencil, I don't want to be too... Um, I don't want to push down really hard. I still want to be kind of loose and sketchy. That way I can, you know, kind of smudge it out and erase it easier if I need to. Uh, in fact, um, I'm probably going to, you know, kind of take a little bit of this stuff down just so it's not quite so dark. So I just kind of dabbed the, uh, the paper there a little bit, but let's, I usually like to start with the T of the face, so that is the eyes and the nose, um, because they are really the most expressive areas of the portrait. And so getting them right can really make a big difference. And for this too, I'm also, once again, I'm gonna be making a few lines that for the time being are not really going to correspond to anything uh, hard edged like you know the edge of my nose or, or anything like that but rather are going to be um, you know indicators of where shadows and things like that need to go you know once we start shading it You 
can see I'm, I'm really not pushing hard on this. I'm letting the pencil kind of glide across the surface somewhat. And we're going to come back here in a minute and we're going to clean it up a little so you guys can see uh, some of these things a little easier. But hopefully as I'm kind of laying this all in, you'll start to see it somewhat as well. I'm still being kind of angular and kind of geometric right now um, to some extent. Uh, you know, I will kind of come back in and and work on that somewhat as I go. But generally speaking, I'm, uh, I'm trying to refine these really light sketchy lines that I started off with, okay? So bear that, keep that in mind. Okay, so once again, I'm, I'm being, I'm, you know, to help finesse my curves, I'm trying to not only, you know, use angles, but I'm trying to vary them ever so slightly so that as I, as I go, the curve just kind of starts to happen on its own almost. Once again, some of these, like my iris is in such a deep level of shadow. Um, uh, for right now, I really just am making a kind of general idea of where it's going to go. And then once I start shading it, then we'll really kind of put it in at that point. So, you know, once again, we want to work from general to specific and, you know, from uh, basic things up to detail. But we want to pay attention you know, very close attention to everything that we see within the, um, the drawing. And then, uh, also, you know, um, keep in mind where those things are going to be, you know, even though they, we might not be dealing with them right off the bat, we want to still consider where they're going to be overall uh, within the, uh, the finished drawing. So the other thing you'll see, I'm not like drawing my eyebrows really, you know, superficial, uh, you know, ladies, if you got, you know, your makeup's on point and whatnot. Uh, you might have a very crisp eyebrow, but uh, for the guys, our eyebrows are usually a little bit more, less distinct. Uh, I'm also blonde, so that makes it more challenging for me as well, uh, given that, you know, I don't have, like, the hard um, contrast between, like, you know, if, like, say my eyebrows were black or, or dark brown uh, compared to my skin tone, so... Um, something else that I have to keep in mind or you know if you're presented with a similar situation is that your um, you know some of your features might not have as distinct or hard edged features um, within them so this that's something that once again where you know careful attention to detail is going to be your friend
can't forget about the little corners and things in my eyes. Now, once again, in my photograph, it's a little difficult to see them, but just because I can't see them in my photograph as well doesn't mean that they're not there, and so I need to be aware of them. So that's, once again, careful attention to detail is, is key because it's the little things that will bring life to your drawing in the end, okay? Um, especially in a portrait, um, it's really those little things within um, those little details that you capture that are going to have a profound impact on the overall realism of your um, of your drawing and the likeness of your portrait and things like that. Okay, so pretty. Pretty satisfied. Um, I do want to retouch my the edge of my nose just a little, little bitty bit. My nose kind of tapers inward and then bulges out just a little bit. And so it, it's, it's kind of a, an interesting uh, complex curve that happens that can be a little hard to get right, right off the bat. So once again, you know, don't be afraid to make corrections and, and whatnot, all right? So from there, we come down and lay in my lip somewhat before I go on to the mustache. Now, once again, I'm presented with a unique challenge in that most of my lip, or at least part of my lip, is obscured by my mustache. And so I really want that to uh, I want to watch how much I'm, I'm really kind of doing there a little goes a long way now for the mustache itself I'm not going to like sit there and draw a bunch of individual hairs right now I'll probably do some of that in the detail at some point. But instead, I'm gonna make a few marks that kind of indicate where the overall placement of it is and where it's gonna kind of fall, if you will. Likewise. to do the same thing over here and on this side it kind of blends into my beard as it begins to come down as well and the same thing on this side it's just a little bit less or a little bit more ethereal on this side whereas it's a little more hard edged on this side all right so I want to indicate a few things here and there Let's see, an overall placements. And a lot of this, once again, is going to be, I'm going to deal more with in the actual shading process in the next video. But I want to make indications of where things are going to be so that when I come to the shading, it's going to be a lot easier to deal with. All right. So from there, let's do, let's finish off my forehead. And 
gonna tie into where my eyebrow kind of is there. And it also kind of curves back downwards a little bit. Okay. Now, all right, went a little, a little too far. You can see I went a little too dark with that mark too, so it's not erasing quite well. So that's a, the other problem with this compressed stuff is that it does not erase anywhere near as well as the vine does. So it's, um, you need to be careful with it. Uh, going too hard, I should say, with it. Now, I'm going to make the kind of line for my beard, but I'm also going to kind of obscure that line out that I initially made so that I can make more, you know, kind of ethereal marks that will not pronounce quite as much in the uh, in the shading so it's more of an indication of of where it's going to be versus a hard edge line all right so from there let's also think about my ear over here for a second and ears are very complicated forms um, because of all the little folds of cartilage and whatnot that we've got going on in them. So, some, there's something else to kind of be aware of that, you know, close attention to detail in your ear is gonna be pretty key to creating the overall accuracy of said ear. So we want to make sure that we're watching, you know, our overall placements, uh, shapes, things like that. So My beard also kind of obscures the uh, edge of my ear somewhat too. So that's something to be aware of as well. Now. beard is also not quite so angular as well so I want to kind of address that and And so we got something kind of like that and make a few indications of some of the major forms that kind of come through here as well because you know my beard like my face has undulations in it and everything like that that are uh, you know not quite um, Not quite flat. Now my arm placement also kind of needs to go down a little bit on that side. And... So does the shirt somewhat.
something like that. Once again, I'm looking at all of the little changes and things that are taking place as this form moves. And I also know that I have kind of a fold that comes in. And I know that the button needs to be kind of there and there. I got a few lines for kind of where our shadows and the folds are going to be. What have you. All right, so from that, let's do the top of my head now, just to kind of round us all off here. So, The other thing I want to do is look at how my hair is receding, or I should say how it's bending around my head. So I can see that that side got way too tall on me. something kind of like that. So once again, I can kind of come through and obscure some of those lines. And we're gonna make some of it, well, I need to make another measurement here. forehead's not tall enough and my hairline is too tall. Once again, I don't really have a hard edge line there either. More of a suggestion, if you will. That's something that, once again, will be addressed more in the 
in the shading of everything than anywhere else. Now, I'm gonna take one more look at the top edge here. And then I think the main line work is gonna be pretty much done. So the other thing is make sure that you're standing back and looking at this, that you're drawing from a distance from time to time because otherwise things can kind of get lost from you and um, they, uh, they start to look weird and, and not quite right. Much better, much better. Okay. Now, the other thing I can tell just looking at it that my uh, overall kind of placement of a few things is a little off, which is making the portrait look a little bit like it's leaning more forward than it is. But that's all right, it's a drawing and it'll work for our purposes. But once again, we wanna make sure that we're checking all of these things for their accuracy is, and everything like that. And we wanna get as close as possible to uh, as close as accurate as we can or as possible. Okay. Now, there are a few lines that I really want to keep intact. So I'm going to make just a few kind of darker marks, and that's just because these are going to be you know, hard edges that I don't want to get obscured later on. So we're, I'm just going to kind of re-establish them here and there. I always feel like my portraits or portraits of me tend to look a little bit angry. You might be able to tell that. That's not that I'm an angry person all the time or anything like that. I just, I don't know, it's just an interesting phenomenon. So I'm also gonna make a few kind of marks. here and there, and once again, these kind of dark areas.
and likewise, you know, my kind of more major, major lines and things. Now from there, here in a minute, I'm also gonna do something that's gonna help me out a little bit later. Uh, just bear with me for just a second. Okay. Alrighty. Make a few more kind of indications of the way my hair curves. That way when I start to shade, I can follow some of those lines, which will help make the general idea of, of my hair versus, you know, doing every individual strand, you know, which will save time and everything like that. All right, so there I've got a pretty accurate uh, image. Uh, like I said, it's, it's bending forward a little bit, but that's all right uh, for our purposes. Uh, it, it will work. So now what I want to do is I'm going to indicate just a few areas of our shadow so that later on I can really pick them out easy. This will also help me when I start erasing highlights and things back out as well. Hopefully this will also help you kind of see things a little better. And where they're going to be. You 
indications here and there. Of everything. So there we have our basic line work for a portrait. All right. So, you know, once again, we want to make sure that we're starting from simple, working our way up to detail, to specific. And uh, also we want to, you know, kind of, uh, you know, um, gradually refine our line as we go from those simple shapes and angles that we started with. And then from there, we can also begin to refine uh, the portrait as well. And once again, I'm, I'm seeing some things that I should have earlier and all of that. All right. So yeah, that's, that's the basic gist of what I want you to do in terms of drawing it out. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to go about uh, erasing your out, out your highlights and then adding back in your shadows and blending and all of that kind of stuff. So until then, thanks for joining me. We'll see you again next time.